Good day, y'all. Hello. So, welcome to uh, Happy Louis Real Day. I, that always seems weird to me to yeah. say Happy Louis. It, like, like right. we're 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 celebrating a guy who was executed <laughs> by the Canadian government for supporting the Métis. Yeah. See, I do know how to pronounce yeah, you it. Know. Uh, all right. So, welcome back to Heavy Cardboard's uh, playthroughs. So today we thought, since it is. Louis Real Day up in the Great White North, eh? So hello to all our Canadian viewers. Uh, we thought, hey, what better reason? And it was actually Jeff Alberta, one of our followers on Twitter, that recommended it. So good call. Yes. So here we are. This is Louis Real. Uh, this is by Victory Point Games right here. Uh, I think it's going for 20 25 bucks that you can get it right now. Uh, it's a two-player card-driven game, so if you're familiar with Twilight Struggle, 13 Days, mm -hmm. stuff like that, uh, it'll be fairly familiar uh, for you. So we, um, I'm Edward. I'm Amanda. Co-host Amanda, obviously. Uh, so we reviewed this recently. What episode was it? Was 60, it 62 or 63? Three. I Go with eight. it. Sure. Uh, so if you're interested in our review, recommend going and checking that out. Uh, so without further ado, I figured we'd get into... A brief teaching and then we'll play it and go through there so if you guys are watching along feel free to comment ask questions whatever we like to interact uh, so without further ado high treason the trial of Louis Real so the game takes place uh, as it's a two-player only game in which we one player plays the prosecution that'd be this guy and one player plays the defense that's me. and that's Amanda so what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to sway these jurors over here to see our side of the argument, just like a regular trial. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I, as the prosecution, am trying to get, get a score of 100 or higher to be able to uh, convict 99 or lower. He gets off scot-free. So how do we do that? Well, the game takes place over five rounds. It starts out with jury selection, then two parts of trial in chief, and then a summation, and then deliberation. At the end of deliberation, we're going to have sway markers out here on various jurors, and we're going to uh, score those based on where these different aspects are with the jurors, and that brings us to our final score. So the game starts out with jury selection. So we're going to deal out seven of these cards each, and in general, red cards tend to favor the prosecution, i.e. me, and blue cards, let's see if we can find a better one. Blue cards tend to favor the defense. And I say tend to favor because there are cards for the prosecution which actually favor the defense due to the real life prosecution rushing to put Louis Real on trial. All right, so what we're going to do, like I said, we're gonna start out, we're gonna deal seven of these cards out to each of us. And then starting uh, with with the, the, prosecution. The, the prosecution goes first. I'm going to play five of these cards of the seven. The other two I'm going to place down underneath my summation card marker, and those are going to be banked for end game, for, for uh, summation. summation. Then after I've done that, Amanda is going to play five cards. And each of these cards, you'll be able to see, is broken down into three segments. So there's jury selection, then if you play it during jury selection, it does one thing. Play it during trial in chief, it does another. Uh, if you play it during summation, it does another. Now, just like other card-driven war games and games in general, these cards have different uh, action points or command points. Or, or yeah, whatever. they're they're called different things, but they they all are the same different thing. So you can either play it for the action points, or you can play it for the event. A lot of times you're going to see us playing cards for the event, mm -hmm. but sometimes if you get a card that has a really good event that helps the other side, then instead you're going to probably want to play it for the action points, which uh, I think they're called something different here. They are, but, but I can't remember. Action points, command points, it, it's the same thing. So we're going to, during jury selection, we're going to try and reveal or uh, peek at these different aspects. So each juror, there are 12 uh, possible jurors that will sit here for the trial. This is the only uh, this is the only capital case in which there were only six jurors. And so this game also has six jurors. 
we're going to try and find out uh, a little bit of information each about all of these jurors. And then we're at the end of jury selection, we're going to be able to dismiss three each to get us down to tw uh, six from 12. So each of these jurors have three different aspects. There's a religion, which they're either Protestant or Catholic. There's a language, which is either English or French. And there's an occupation, which is either a farmer, a merchant, or a government worker. Now, me as the prosecution, I prefer to see English, Protestant, government workers, in a pro or, or possibly merchants. Right. Amanda. I want French, Catholic, farmers. And the reason is, is the distribution of these cards tend to favor those mm -hmm. aspects. So... Once we have gone through jury to, uh, to, uh, bleh, jury selection, we're going to eliminate three of these each. Then we're going to seat the jurors. So there's going to be three here and three here. Then we're going to go into trial in chief, which we're going to shuffle all the cards back in, except those that are under our uh, summation card marker, respectively. And then we're going to deal out seven apiece. And then at that point, we're going to uh, play one card each, alternating uh, until we've played five, and then we're going to bank two more in here. Mm -hmm. So when we play a card, the things that we're going to do is we're going to affect these different aspects, either up towards this end, this side of the board, towards the prosecution, or if in Amanda's case, she's going to want to push them that way. Mm -hmm. Either affect these aspects, or we're going to put out these little markers out here, which are double-sided, which one is blue, which is the defense side, and one side is red, which is the prosecution side. And these different jurors, whichever ones are sat, they range from having room for these markers between four and six. So I think, yeah, you can see them. This one has four, this one has six. Once it's full with those different, with the different uh, aspect markers. So these are sway markers. Sway markers, thank you. Once it's full, that juror is considered locked. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's heard all he needs to hear and he is going to completely just help out the defense or help out the prosecution depending on what side is locked in. There are certain uh, attorney cards through here depending on what side it is that will help unlock locked jurors but those are considerably fewer than they are uh, the rest of the witnesses and other such things in the, uh, in the deck. So we're going to take turns playing cards, playing five of the seven. Then after that, we're going to not reshuffle and we're going to deal out seven more. We're going to do the exact same thing. So again, starting with the uh, prosecution, we'll play one at a time until we bank two more. At that point, we will have had six cards each banked. Then we go into summation. Then we're not going to use any of the deck here. We're going to discard that and we're only going to play the six cards that we've banked here. And what we're going to be able to do that is the prosecution is going to play three of them, meaning me, then Amanda is going to play all six of mm -hmm. hers. And then just like in real life, the prosecution gets last licks. Yep. I get to play my last three as kind of a rebuttal mm -hmm. almost. And what we're going to be able to do during that is we're going to either add sway markers to the jurors to really lock down, yeah. or we're going to, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to basically be uh, trying to sway the jurors as a last minute like you yes. do in summation, right? Then after that, we're going to go into deliberation, which is if any of these guys are locked, they're going to then try and influence other jurors on your behalf. Your behalf being for the defense mm -hmm. or for the prosecution. And then we're going to score the six jurors. Uh, based on the value of the different aspects that they have. So, for instance, if a juror right now were a Protestant French government worker, it would be 5, 10, 15 points for that juror, plus any uh, sway markers that are on them, and then either be doubled if it's locked for the prosecution or halved if it's locked for the, uh, pros uh, for the defense. So let's say it were doubled for the prosecution, that would be worth 30 points. Well, that's 30 towards 100, mm -hmm. and we do that for all six jurors. 100 or more, he hangs. 99 or less, he goes free. And that, I think, pretty yeah, much in, in, a, in a nutshell is Louis Real yep. or high treason. So without further ado, uh, if there's no questions, we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll shuffle up. You want to shuffle them? Sure.
So while she's doing that, a couple other things I didn't hit on. So there is a evidence of guilt track and there's an evidence of insanity track. And historically, what really happened was uh, Louis Rial's defense team wanted to argue that he was insane and he couldn't be found guilty due to reason of insanity. Louis Rial completely dis just he wasn't on board with that. Right. He did not agree with that. And so he actually kind of worked against them a little bit. And so what Amanda is also, in addition to doing that and these, she's trying to push this marker up, which is going to be able to influence different aspects at the very end of the game. Me as the prosecution, I have to meet a minimum threshold of evidence of guilt. If I don't reach at least two, he's automatically acquitted right. due to lack of, uh, evidence. lack of evidence. But if I get it up to three or four, I'm going to gain sway markers for every unlock juror here uh, right before um, deliberation uh, so yeah that's pretty much it and these these different markers that are out here you can see the red boxes in which they start at you also it's written if you prefer so this says Protestant this says Catholic we just like the the uh, the aesthetic of the symbols on the other side mm -hmm. instead so either or all right so we each start are you shuffled yep. or cut and go for it. You deal. I okay. cut. All right. So one of the things to think about here with jury selection, just like a real trial, jury selection is extremely important in that you want people that are favorable to your side. Now, there are two different things that are going to happen during jury selection. We're either going to reveal, meaning we flip these aspects face up to where both sides know it, or in a perfect world, you get cards that say peak. Peak means we're going to look at it and all of these have arrows on it, as you can see, and we're going to turn it towards that player to show that, oh, that player's already seen it and that player can go back and reference it any time. But once uh, somebody out the other side peaks, then obviously both it. sides just flip it up. So starting with me, uh, oh, also you're allowed to mulligan your hand once per game if you receive a, a really bad hand of cards, but probably it's pretty rare. It's so rare. Far. I haven't done it in right. all of my plays. So let me go through the cards here, and as we play them, we will we will communicate that to y'all. We'll read the flavor text and everything. Oh yeah, totally. Um, Who does the prosecution call to help with voir dire, sir? Uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, the player aides. So the prosecution is, again, red. The defense is blue. The summation is actually wrong. I believe it's the summation, mm -hmm. is it? Yeah. That, uh, that is actually a misprint on this. But here's the jury selection here. It says... Uh, the player's notes. So the prosecution, it says, do not let the starting values of the seven different aspects fool you. By the time the trial is or, over, typically the juror most favorable to your defendant uh, is an English Protestant government worker. Your, your cards will tend to raise those aspect values easiest and to much to your benefit. The change of venue for this trial has made Francophones or supporters of the cause and the Catholics scarce among the jury pool. As the prosecution, you want to discover the jurors' languages and religions so that you can dismiss as many French and Catholics as you can, as you can find, as well as those who will be most difficult to lock. Well, as the prosecution, it's important for me to lock these jurors for the simple fact that locked jurors score double. So therefore, it's easier. So if somebody has four spots to lock as opposed to six, they're going to be considerably easier to lock. The downside to that is when we get into to deliberation, these guys here, this one, for instance, has one deliberation action point, meaning he can only influence one juror one time, whereas this dude, he's harder to lock, or dudette, maybe, uh, <laughs> well, three. Well, no, I don't imagine women served in the 1800s. That's a fair point. I don't think they did, so that's actually a good point. They're all males yeah. in this, yeah. Uh, which, again, that's Makes historic, sense. right? So three deliberation action points for this one. So he can influence more juror or, or jurors stronger than this one could. So it's a, it's a give and take yeah. in that aspect. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. So to start out with, 
Uh, well, while you're two, looking, two, I will read my the defense player's notes okay. for Jerry Swift. Cool. And it's I was reading along with you, and it's a lot of the same verbiage. Do not let the starting values for the seven different aspects fool you. By the time the trial is over, typically the juror most favorable to your defendant is a French Catholic farmer. Your cards will tender to, tender, tend to lower those aspect values the easiest, although the change of venue for this trial has made francophones and supporters of their cause and Catholics scarce among the jury pool. As a defense, you will want to discover the juror's occupations so that you can dismiss all of the government workers and as many of the merchants as you can, as well as those who are easiest to lock. So what I'm looking at right now on my cards is... I'm looking at this, I'm not only looking at what it does for jury selection, but I'm also looking at summation events, mm -hmm. because do I want to, because two of these I have to set aside uh, for summation, and so I'm looking at this and I'm like, e do, what do I want to set aside? This one is pretty good for me, so I'm leaning towards putting that one aside, um, and I can't really exactly say out loud, but what I can do is show you all what the summation event does. So we're going to set that one aside. So that will go there. And so the the general rule is, like I said earlier, green is helps either both sides or neither side. Uh, blue tends to help the defense. Boo. Yay. Or red tends to help the prosecution. Boo. Uh... Yeah, and we're going to go ahead and put that one away. Whoop, let's get that in there for summation. So that decision is already made. So now we're talking about what are we going to play here. And we're going to start out with prosecution testimony, two curses. Thomas McKay testified that Rial described the Hudson Bay's the Hudson's Bay Company and the Canadian government as quote unquote curses and urge that arms be taken up against them. So during jury selection, reveal three language or two occupations. So I'm going to reveal three languages. So looking at this, I think I will go ahead and start with this one, which that's English. Yay! All right, so that's a good thing for me. Now, three others. We'll go ahead. And reveal this one. English. Yay! <laughs> and we'll go ahead and reveal this one, which is English. What the heck, Yay! So if you want to grab the three extra containers over there, Amanda, and show people. So at the beginning of the game, there's a whole bunch of occupations, a whole bunch of religions, and a whole bunch of language chits. And what we do is randomize it and put them out face down. Mm -hmm. And so it's buried every game, so you never know what a given juror is going to be. So, that is me. So, two curses has been played. Amanda. You play five cards. Uh, I do play five. Yep. You're right. Good call. Um, we do not alternate. Hmm. So, yeah, one thing I should point out, that during jury selection, you're only playing events. There are no uh, there are no uh, use of action points on the cards. It's strictly events. So, next, we will play prosecution witness George Ness. Ness was a farmer and justice of the peace near Batoche, uh, who was seized by uh, Dumont, which is uh, Louis Rial's kind of partner in crime, fellow leader of the Métis. Quote, when we got to the church, Mr. Rial commenced saying he was he was a prophet and he could foresee events. Father Moulin says, further quote, I protest against you touching the church, end quote. Rial says, look, he is a Protestant. So there's the flavor text. So we're going to reveal two occupation or two religion. So we're going to go ahead and reveal two religion. Now, it's a good idea uh, to get a lot of information or a little information about a lot of different mm -hmm. jurors. But anytime I'm revealing, I'm also giving information to the nasty old defense. So we'll go ahead and spread the love. So it's going to be two occupations. Or I said religions, didn't I? Mm -hmm. All right, two religions. So Protestant. Yay. And we'll go ahead and come over here. 
and Protestant. So, so far that everything I have revealed mm -hmm. has been beneficial to the, profe uh, the prosecution. Yay. All right. So, man, I really don't have a lot of peaks. Um, and by a lot, I, I mean one. Uh, so, we will play defense witness. So, even though I'm the prosecution, I have to deal with cards just like in Twilight Struggle. Yeah. You, you, you have to mitigate the cards that are dealt to you. Um, oh, hey. Hey, Alan. All right. Alan Emmer, uh, head of uh, Victory Hi. Point. He's Hi. watching. Hey, Alan. Uh, let's see. He says, I knew nothing uh, Louis Riel or his trial before I developed the game. It was a cool history lesson. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'll be honest. Being an American, I was 100% ignorant. Yep. I had no clue, never heard of Louis Riel as well. When I heard about this game, I was like, wait, you get to play as a lawyer? Yeah, we were I, so I'm, excited. Yeah, there, yeah, and so actually, Amanda, you had told the story in our room. Yes, I review. ran to the Victory Point booth at SF. To go buy a copy, buy and we've been playing the heck out of it yep. ever since. So, okay, defense witness, or the prosecution calls? No, all right, so defense <laughs> witness, Philip Garneau. Philip Garneau was part of the Real Rebellion. Real told him that he, he wanted to make Bishop Bourgeau of Montreal, Pope of the New World, and that he wanted to divide the country up into sevenths with a different region for the different nationalities. Again, so a quick history lesson. Uh, Louis Riel uh, was the head of the Métis, who is, they are half native, and uh, the natives had intermarried with the French from uh, that, that were the, the people coming over for that represented Canada. Mm -hmm. And so there were laws that, that governed the French, and there were laws that governed the natives, but the Métis were not subject to either of those laws, so they kind of were like the, the outcast. It seems of uh, they, nothing applied to them, and they were they were overlooked by the Canadian government, and so that's where the rebellion came from. Uh, Louis Riel led one uh, rebellion. I, I want to say it was in Manitoba, which he helped found the uh, province of Manitoba. Okay. And then he left, became an American citizen, and then the people of Saskatchewan said, hey, uh, can you come help us right. with the same thing that you did, the, the Métis there? And he said, sure. So he went up there, and uh, the di he did the exact same thing that worked for the previous province. However, the Canadian Pacific Railroad uh, didn't exist during the first rebellion, and it did during the second. And so the Canadian government was able to move troops considerably quicker, mm -hmm. and they were unprepared. And it ended up that Dumont fled to the States and avoided prosecution, whereas Louis Riel turned himself in to stand trial. And this is said trial. So, okay, I keep getting sidetracked. I'm sorry. All right. So reveal three language or two occupations. He, he revealed one and got talking about... Did I? In occupation? or uh, it was, You chose religion. You only oh, no. I only did one religion for him. Oh, let me back up. Sorry. No, I did two religions. Mm -hmm. Looking at Yeah, one, two. Okay. So we're good. So now we're going to reveal... Oh, it's because it's the same. Okay. Sorry. Right. So Bye -bye. we're going to do two occupations this time. So we don't have anything on this cat. So let's see. He's a merchant. Man, I am batting a thousand. This is boating well early. And we'll go ahead and come up here and reveal an occup another merchant. Yes! All right. All right. So, let's see. Uh, do, do, do. You know what? We will go ahead and play defense witness, Father Vital Formand. Formand. Uh, Vital Formand was a priest of St. Laurent in the district of Carleton. He claimed that Rial had non-doctrinaire non views of the Trinity and wanted to replace the Pope. Quote, the only God was God the Father, and that God, and that God the Son was not God. The Holy Ghost was not God either. End quote. So it says reveal two traits or peak at one religion, which is what I will choose to do. So, do do do. All right, we're gonna go ahead and peak at this religion. So quietly, we will show what that is. All right. We don't know. Oh, we I won't. saw it. You did. Yeah. Uh, Amanda saw it, so we got to get rid of that. Yeah. So we'll get. Good we'll draw a new one. one. 
All right, we're drawing a new okay, one. I'm going to close my eyes. All right, right, so here we go. That was that. So Amanda doesn't know what that is. All right, so now if you notice over here, and let me push that down so you guys can see it a little bit. There we go. So right here, it's pointing towards me to show that I have seen that. I peeked at it, and Amanda does not know. Uh, Alan here real quick. or You know what? Let me finish this, and I'll get back to that. All right, prosecution witness, Major Crozier. Major Crozier was the commandant of the police force at Fort Carlton in Battleford. He was involved in the fighting at Duck Lake and received surrender terms from Rial. He could testify who fired first at the battle, Rial's forces, or the Northwest Mounted Police. And that was the main battle that took place. Uh, yeah, that started everything here. So, I get to reveal three language or one religion. Um, and you know what? Uh, because this is my last card... And more information is good, even though Amanda is going to be aware of it. I think revealing more is better than not. So I'm going to reveal three language. So let's see, who do I not know anything about? The far one, if you'll flip the language, Amanda. Please be French. Dang it! English. This is uncanny. What so the heck, at, man? The, at this point, if I lose, this is going to be really bad. <laughs> uh, that language as well. Another English. This is. I, I've never seen this. And keep coming this way. We're on a roll. Wow. And just for the record, you did place did all this. this, right? <laughs> so it's obvious I'm not cheating. <laughs> so, okay. So here's what... Let's recap real quick. So for the prosecution, ideally, we want English Protestant government workers so or merchants. Mm -hmm. Merchants are also good for me. So merchant, uh, we know nothing here. English, Protestant, English, 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 Protestant, English, English, something that we all know, but we won't tell her, and Merchant. So literally every single thing so far has been beneficial to me. But now Amanda gets to play five cards for the defense. So I'll let her take over while I read. Okay. Prosecution witness, Henry Walters. Henry Walters was a, was a store owner at Batoche. We all re demanded that Walters surrender the arms at his store. If they succeed, the, the movement would pay. If they did not, the Dominion government would pay for them. Reveal three language or two occupation. So I'm going to reveal the rest of, well, I guess not all of them. Three languages. So let's right. do... And uh, a couple things. So Alan mentions that the artist in Winnipeg walks by the stat a statue of Louis Riel on his way to work every day. Okay. I think that's pretty cool. And also, he says, keep in mind... The trial was illegally moved to Regina right. uh, to, to favor the prosecution. Mm -hmm. And that's represented here in the game because the, the, the jurors are stacked to favor the prosecution. Right. And the, the actual percentages, I'm not sure if you guys can see them here, but it's actually stacked in, in for the prosecution. Yeah. So 61% are Protestant, 72% are English. Half of them are farmers, but the other half are merchant and mm -hmm. government workers. So, All okay, right, what'd so you I reveal? revealed French, Boo. French, Boo. English. All right, yay. Okay. Prosecution witness William Tompkins. He worked as an interpreter for the Indian Department. He was taken prisoner by the Métis. He did not witness Rial taking part in the council. To him, Dumont appeared to be leading it. Tompkins did witness Rial armed with a Winchester rifle. All right, now Alan also says that you want to reveal occupations and dismiss government workers as the top priority. Well, here's the thing, Alan. We're terrible prosecutors, so quit giving her advice. Okay? <laughs> I need all the help I can get. Okay, all right, reveal three occupations. All so right. I am going to reveal this one since I know that he speaks French. And he's a government worker. He's no good for, to me. <laughs> You're dead to me. You're dead to me. One... Two, a farmer. Yay, farming. And let's do this one. Merchant. All right. Okay. So you've already banked your two cards right. as well, right? Okay. Prosecution attorney, Britton Bath Ulster. Though a liberal, he played an important role for the Crown in prosecuting this case. A leading lawyer in Ontario, Osler did the detailed work of mustering the defense for Rial's trial. If you are the defense, peek at two traits. Boo, we don't like peeking. No peeking! <laughs> hmm. 
I am going to do this language here. And what is that, Amanda? I'm just trying. <laughs> I need every, every every little bit of help I can get. I'm going to do that one and... Ellen says, quit your belly aching. You have a very prosecution rich uh, uh, jury shaping up. But yeah, that's true. But it doesn't mean I'm good at it. Okay. We review the games. Doesn't mean we're good at it. Exactly. Them. All right. Prosecution witness Reverend Charles Pedlado. The Reverend Charles Pedlado was the chaplain of the 90th Rifles at this time. On a long 220 mile trip to Regina for their trial, he guarded the prisoners along with 16 armed soldiers. Pitlato testified that during his journey, he observed no evidence of insanity in Rial. Mm. Reveal two language or one religion. Okay, let's see. We have one, two. There's a lot of languages already revealed. Yeah. There's only one, only two. two. There's only two that you don't know. Right. Here and here. Mm -hmm. One or one religion. Um. I would like to see what this one is. They will not do that one. <laughs> um, let's do this one. Psychic. Okay. Ooh. Prosecution witness Dr. James Wallace. He was the medical superintendent for the Asylum for the Insane of Hamilton. He testified that Rial was sane on the basis of a brief interview of approximately 30 minutes in listening to the trial proceedings. Obviously, he's he's... Lucid. Reveal Come on three now. three occupation or two religion. So you want occupations, right? Correct. So. So let's do. How many is it? Three of three them. Three occupations. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's try to get these little guys. Alan's One. saying, "Look for some Catholics." Two. Yeah, the jury definitely seems stacked Three. For my, in my favor right now. Yeah. All right, so now we are done with jury selection as far as the actual playing of the cards. So at this point, um, make sure I'm getting this right. Now, after the prosecution has played five in bank two, the defense has done the same. We now get to excuse six of the jurors, uh, beginning with the prosecution and alternating, mm -hmm. uh, excusing one juror each. We're going to get rid of three each. So let's take a look here. So I'm anti-French and anti-farmer and anti-Catholic. So anything out here that has two of those things that I know about, I'm going to want to dismiss. Well, ironically, there is not a single juror out here that has two of those that I know of. So for instance, this one is French, but he's a merchant. So that's not so bad. Government is good, and odds are Amanda's going to dismiss this guy, so I'm not even going to worry about that. English Catholic, and Amanda knows what that is, so basically, if it's good, if this is good for her, she'll keep it. If it's bad for her, she'll dismiss it, so I'm not going to worry about that one. English Farmer, I kind of want to keep this guy here because he's easy to lock. Uh... Protestant and farmer, yeah, you know, um, that's 50-50. But again, Amanda knows what the language is, so she'll do the heavy lifting for me and we'll mm -hmm. decide. Um, so this guy is really good for me. I don't mind him. He's good for me. He's really good for me. Uh, don't know much here, but everything I know is good for This is really hard that to determine is. for me. It's not anything that just stands right out. Right. That, oh, yeah, I need to get rid of mm -hmm. them. It's not... Uh, so, he says that uh, you should uh, excuse the, the four sway jurors, which we've already covered. Um, and then I should dismiss the six sway jurors, all things being equal. I agree. I mean, I'm not going to argue with the developer. Uh, but my thinking on this is I'm, I probably want to keep one of these guys around for the simple fact that if I can lock them, even though they're harder to lock, three deliberation uh, action points can really be helpful. Not to mention, I know that there's a lot of English out here, so I'm probably going to not dismiss this guy. So with that said, 
Uh, I'll go ahead. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and dismiss this six right here. So literally, we just take it out. We don't reveal the aspects, and we just move him out of play. So now it's back, or now it's up to the the defense to dismiss one, which she has a ton. Hmm. So I did notice that she looked at this one and didn't immediately dismiss it. Now she could be gay, you know, all meta, which Amanda is not above. So she could be like, well, I'll just make him think that maybe that's helpful for me in the hopes that she gets me to dismiss it for her so she can dismiss a fourth uh, one that would favor me. And so it's this whole, I know that she know that I know that you know type thing. And mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome. Going to dismiss this, sure. Okay, which means that was probably English right there, the, the, the language. So, two down. Now back to me. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead. There's a lot of English out there. Oh, let me turn that one. There's a lot of English, so I'm leaning towards, I know this is English, and I'll take my risks on the other, so I'll go ahead and dismiss this five merchant. Well, yeah, I'll dismiss the five merchant. All right, Amanda, you're up. Cool. Space Monkey says, looks great. Already on my shopping list uh, for my next mm -hmm. buy. Good deal. We we really enjoy it. Now, normally when we're not live streaming it and doing stuff and thinking everything out loud like this, you're talking a 45-minute game, and we've reviewed it already, and we said as much, which this normally isn't something that we would feature on Heavy Cardboard, but the fact that it's such a unique uh, theme and just the way... The jury selection is implemented in all of that. So you Amanda's this one? getting rid of the French government worker. Okay. Which that I'll, I'll let you know that was a Protestant as well. The one that I, I knew. Honestly, I assumed that because you were very easily to, easy to say that everything had, that had been looked at was good for you. And so you kind of misspoke there. So ah, I see, look, she, she's crafty one. <laughs> all right. So my last dismissal. Um, you know what? We're going to go ahead and, uh, all things being equal here, I do have two sixes still out here. So I'm leaning towards either one of those or the five farmer, even though he's English, because we have another five English merchant here and we have another English farmer here that's a four. So he would be harder. So what I'm thinking is my gut tells me that Amanda is pretty, my guess, she may be looking to get rid of this guy on her own because it's a merchant and a Protestant. And so neither of us know what the language is. So that's two negatives for Amanda. And there's no other government workers that are exposed. So I think I'm going to get rid of the farmer. And now we are down to seven. We have one left. Hmm. So, Alan says, uh, whatever there's a lot of is where you need to direct your trial efforts as you'll get the most points for your efforts. Exactly. Yeah, totally. And that's why I'm trying to focus on keeping the English on the, on the, on the jury pool because now I know I can just hammer getting the English track up because that is something common between all of them. And then when we get into deliberation... Uh, they'll be tied together a lot. So if I lock jurors that are English, they'll be able to influence other English-speaking jurors. So that's my thought process on it. Oh, let me ask man. you guys real quick while Amanda's de uh, deliberating. How's the sound? Because we're actually using our microphones for the first time as opposed to uh, just doing the stuff that's like on the, uh, on the webcam and, and all that stuff. So how does it sound uh, for those that have watched other ones? Uh, compare, compare, how does it compare to those and how does it just sound even if you haven't watched any of the others? All right, I'm going to dismiss this English farmer. All right. So 
I was wrong on right. that. Okay, so so now here we'll go ahead and bring down. So the three the the guys that are strong on influencing, we tend to actually give them seats. So that's three, and we can put one of the twos up there, and fix these up. And there is our sat jury pool, or three standing, three sat, as it were. So interesting thing to note here. So let's think out loud now. Amanda did look at this immediately, so she knows, and I know now, that this occupation is likely a farmer, all right? Uh, because she did not dismiss it, which she would have. Um, she would have dismissed that if it were a government worker or a merchant because of the fact that they're English. That's my assumption. So now, uh, let's see, what else can I derive from this? Uh, we only know that's English. She did choose to leave the merch the Protestant merchant because of the fact that he's a six uh, sway marker to lock, I assume. Yes. Um, so, so we basically know all the same amount of information. There are only two four sway, there are two fives and two sixes. So I think it's safe to assume that that is a farmer, so that makes sense. So here we go. So we're gonna deal out seven. Four, five, oop, sorry about that. So where are we? We're five. three, five, how many do you have? I have five, you were the only one. You were the only last five. Okay, so six, seven, there we go, all right. So we will not shuffle anymore here. All right, uh, real quick, let's catch up and then we'll start. Uh, do you have any plans to stream teach 18xx game in the near future? Um, it's possible. Yes, we will eventually. I can't promise soon. Um, I've actually talked to Paul, Chad, and Tony to see if they'd be willing to do uh, 1846. Chad's unlikely to do it. Uh, Tony may. We'll see. Um, but yeah, possibly. Um, kill the merchants. Uh Okay, good. Apparently, it sounds pretty good. Uh, if you get a bad draw, you can mulligan, right? Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, here we go. So, remember, uh, you can mulligan, but also you're going to bank two of these cards. So, attorneys are very, very strong for both sides because they can wipe out blocked sway markers. Um... You can remove all the sway markers that affects uh, one aspect, meaning here, or uh, you can play to place three sway markers on any jurors, even locked ones, so you can definitely turn them. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So what I'm really looking for here are anything that really help out for summation events, anything that helps out uh, boosting English since five of the six or four of the six that we know are English. One is French. Odds are it's English. But yeah. Well, no, technically odds are it's French because there's so many more English out. Fair point. Plus all the ones that we knew that mm -hmm. we dismissed. That's a fair point. Um Do, do, do. All right, so I am going to bank that. Are you going to mulligan, Amanda? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to bank those two. And now, starting with the prosecution, I get to play a card. Hmm. Choices, choices. Oh, and yeah, I guess we'll we'll talk about if we play it as the actions as opposed to the events, what happens. Um, you know what? Yeah, okay. The prosecution calls George Holmes Young. George H. Young was the captain in the Northwest Mounted Police. 
Middleton placed uh, Rial in Young's custody immediately after capture. Rial told him that he and Dumont differed on how to defend against the government and that the council sided with Rial's view. So, trial in chief, the, I'm going to play it as the event. I could play it as two actions, but I choose to play it to the event, which is plus one to the evidence of guilt, which again, remember, I have to get that to at least two by the end we're currently in the uh, first part of trial in chief. By the end of this, I have to get it uh, to the second level. So let's go ahead and start that march up and then slide it any one aspect towards me. Everybody is English, the majority at least. We will move the English up one. And that card is out. So Space Monkey says he's having a hard time subscribing with his app. I'll be honest, that's an app issue, so don't know what to tell you. Um, it's the first we've heard of any yeah. issue with anybody subscribing with it, so that's an app issue. I'm sorry. Okay, um, the defense is going to call a prosecution attorney. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's the same Britain Bath officer that I did. Did earlier okay because um, those got shuffled in right. uh, which you reshuffled or after mm -hmm. jury selection um, so I may play to remove all sway markers affecting one aspect and then move that aspect but since there are no sway markers the I'm aspect going, which are these right, right. I'm going to place four sway markers on drawers all right and it could be on one or multiple uh, jurors And then we do two here as well, since I know that he speaks French, and I just hope that he's a Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now would be a good time to point out, so whenever I place sway markers on either of these two jurors, I have to remove Amanda's first, the defense's first, so, to remove, so it would take two actions to remove those two, and then I add in subsequent actions. So it's one action point is to place a sway marker um, out here under a juror. Uh, and you're, you're limited to two per juror for non-attorney cards. So the fact that Amanda played a juror in attorney card, she could have placed all four and locked one of the jurors. But you can't do that with non-attorney cards. So for me... All right, I'm going to play neutral. Um, uh, the prosecution calls neutral witness, Father Alex Andre. Father Andre was a French Catholic missionary to the people of Manitoba, the Northwest Territories, and in particular, the Métis. He was involved with peacefully protesting and airing grievances. Quote, government silence produced dissatisfaction in the minds of the people. End quote. So I could move aspects uh, to either with direction, which obviously would be towards the prosecution, for the French, Catholic, and farmer aspects. Oh, my goodness, I'm my call. Which is tempting. But to be honest with you, I'm more focused on doing the jurors right now. So I'm not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to use his three action value, or his three action points. So to sway a juror, remember, I could do up to two. Or I can argue an aspect. So I could spend one action point to move one of the aspects up towards me and then I would place one of the markers out here on whatever one. Um, you're, you're allowed to do a second one but that second one costs two action points so it would be to move it twice would cost three action points. If I were to do that I would be better off doing uh, those so instead I'm going to go ahead and use his three actions to uh, sway jurors so I'm going to take three of these guys and they're double-sided one for the prosecution one for the defense so we know protestant and the merchant so we'll go one two and then over here we like the english speaker so three so that is father alexis andre here we'll throw the discards there squirrel you're up You guys enjoying it? Other than Alan, I feel like he's a little biased. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to play a prosecution witness. 
but I'm going to play it just for the actions. Okay. So, who is he? He is Thomas McKay. This volunteer under Major Crozier at Fort Carlton was captured while visiting Batouche and put on trial by Real and the council. He turned to me and said I was a traitor to his government, that I was a speculator and a scoundrel, and a robber and thief, and I don't know what all. Two actions. Scoundrel. He's a scoundrel. All right. Okay, so, let's see. Um... Really? Yeah. I'm going to put down two sway markers for my two actions. Mer says, I appear to be invoking the power of the pyramid or something playing under the tripod. <laughs> it's it's the best way that we can figure out to get it for the overhead shot. And it works, and it's actually pretty pretty comfortable. It's fine. So, yeah, it, it hasn't worked. Because if you go, back, you go back and look at any of the five videos that we've already streamed, I have not only lost, I've lost horribly. Because I'm too busy... You know, running the game and doing all that and, and interacting with you. So it's it's a valid excuse. So on that note, Saturday night, after we got done streaming both games, it was uh, Feast for Odin and then Lahav. We actually went out there and just played a normal game and played Zolkin and I... He crushed everybody. Yeah, and so so I do win games so on I don't occasion. Know, I don't know what my excuse was for roads and my spectacular <laughs> roads and boats on <laughs> Friday. <laughs> We uh, won't talk about it. <laughs> all right, let's see. The no, no. All right, the prosecution calls witness Thomas Sanderson to the stand. Thomas Sanderson was a farmer at Carrot River who was taken hostage by Rial's Métis. Quote, they said they had to take a woodcock prisoner, and I spoke up for his in his defense, and they said they were going to take me also, end quote. Riel later told Sanderson, I consider you my enemy. All right, so I'm going to play it for the event, which is it's either or. It's either plus one to the Protestant and plus one to the farmer aspects, or, and this is the one I'm going to choose, plus one to the evidence of guilt. So boom, I have now met the proof, the burden of proof. Um, and plus one to any aspect, which to stick with it. All right. going to play rebuttal testimony officers recalled rebuttal witnesses general middleton and captain young testified that Rial seemed sane Rial said he knew he could not wage war on canada and britain but he hoped to capture crozier and use him as a hostage to force the government to consider his demands i am going to move the catholic aspect to towards me and that's bottomed out Correct. so Oh, and uh, you played it as the event, so we don't add right. any aspect markers there. But if you play it for uh, the action points, then we would. And notice we haven't done that yet. Um, all right. We're going to play uh, defense evidence, a purely constitutional movement. Rial and others framed his political motives and methods as constitutional, not rebellious. Thomas Jackson testified, quote, He said if they could not get what they agitated for in five years, to agitate for five years more. And constitutional agitation would get what they wanted, end quote. But seeing as all of this is for the defense, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and play for the three you action points. You got all points. my cards, and I, I got all of yours. So we're going to grab three sway markers. And actually what we're going to do to start is we're going to take we're going to remove one of the defense from that witness and we're going to remove one from the defense on that witness. So that's two of the three and then we're going to add one to that juror, not witness, sorry, the jurors. Sorry, misspoke. And that's it for defense evidence. Okay, prosecution witness, Reverend Pitt Blotto, we already talked about him. Okay, all right. I'm gonna use the two actions. Are you sure you don't wanna do it for either of the events? Yeah. They both look fantastic I to me. I absolutely positive, actually. Okay, all right, just, I, I just want to give you your options. Well, you know, you're very kind. <laughs> I'm a giver. Yeah, you are. Um, I am going to use my two actions to remove a sway marker 
or place it that I'm, right. I'm moving. All right, so there's one of your two. And for my second one, I'm going to place it right there. All right, so you can see there's very much a uh, seesaw tug of war type yep. thing that goes on here. So for my last card, prosecution calls Dr. Augustus Jukes to the stand. Dr. Augustus Jukes was the senior surgeon of the Northwest Mounted Police. He observed Rial, quote unquote, almost every day after his capture and testified that, quote, I have never seen anything during my intercourse with Mr. Rial to leave any impression upon my mind that he was insane, end quote. So, Two action points. Because Amanda has not moved her evidence of insanity, I can't lower it anymore. So I choose to do the two actions. And for one action, we're going to place a aspect marker and bump the English up one. And for the second, we will add that sway marker back onto that juror. And we are at the halfway point for me for trial in chief. Almost and, for yep. me. Okay. Um, prosecution evidence. Letter to Major Crozier. St. Anthony, 21st March, 1885. Major, the Provisional Government of the Saskatchewan communicate to you the following conditions of surrender. Give up completely the situation at Carleton and Battleford together with all government properties. Louis Rial, Exo Vise. Two action points because everything is for the prosecution. You sure you don't want to add the evidence of guilt uh -huh. off one? Okay. All right. Just Again, options. I okay. just, you know, you're such a giver. <laughs> okay. For my first one, I'm going to walk up this juror. Which is unfortunate, but yeah, it is what it is. And then for my second one, I'm going to place a marker on the language trait and move down the English one. So we should know, once this gets a third marker, it's locked and that's been beaten to death. So the jurors are kind of tired of hearing mm -hmm. about it and you can't do anything for it. You can still move it with events, but you cannot, uh, with action you cannot with action points, right? Unless there's something that changes that night. Don't, don't think, think so. there is. Um, and I'm sure Alan will correct us if we're wrong. All right, so, so now we get seven more cards. All right, so we move into trial in chief part two, which is the exact same thing. So seven more without reshuffling. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Seven, and the prosecution gets one more? No. Okay. That is a lie, sir. All right. <laughs> so again, uh, alternate, just like it said, uh, at the or just like the first part in the prosecution starts. But again, we must bank two cards. We don't so. have to at the beginning, though. No, you don't have to. It's just I, I like to plan out my turn that way and kind of... And actually, you know what? I may not this time to be able to see what you do. To be able to be like, oh, wait, she's focusing on that. I want to be able to bank that later. So, yeah, that's actually a really good point. Um, Alan says, seeing that many, uh, that many red prosecution cards from the defense player's hand, that might have been a good one to have mulliganed. So, okay, good good to say. Um, this is a considerably better hand for the prosecution. Again, red is good for the prosecution. So, Okay. Um, this is actually a really good card for whomever gets it. And, oh, uh, no, you took out the, uh, did you take out the, yes. the all? Okay. Um, one other thing. There are, I think there's five or six, I think it's five, uh, like alt history, uh, variant cards that you can include that like, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank. His partner in crime, the other leader of the Métis. Yeah, we just read his name. Um, Dumont. Yeah. There's a, a had Dumont come and uh, to to Rial's defense, um, but it never happened. But if it if he did, maybe this is how it could have impacted the trial. So there are alt history cards in there that uh, Alex uh, Barry, the designer, included in this. So that's cool. But we're we we took him out for for this part. So chief pound maker, good call. Yep. All right, so here we go. Uh, oh, that's kind of that's pretty good. All right, we're going to start out with prosecution witness. Uh, the prosecution calls Peter Tompkins to the stand. P 
Peter Tompkins lived on Duck Lake and had gone to repair the telegraph line that had been cut when he was arrested by the Métis. He overhead, overheard Rial say, quote, What was Carlton or what was Prince Albert? They're nothing. March on, my brave army. End quote. So, he has two actions. However, I choose to play it for the event. I could peek at all unrevealed language trait markers, which is one. Nope, let's not. Or plus one to the evidence of guilt and plus one to any aspect. You know what? I know we're hammering the English, but there's also a bunch of merchants. So we're going to bring the merchant track up one. Thank you, Peter Tompkins. You're dismissed. Okay, I am going to play um, prosecution testimony to curses. Thomas McKay testified that Lou Real. Oh, that's the one I yeah, played earlier. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so peek at all unrevealed <coughs> occupation traits and one action point. I think that's what that means, right? Uh, no. The the actually, let me let me make sure I get this what right. Is that is point? actually a quote unquote moment of insight. Oh. So let me let me have it and I'll show the camera. So moment of insight, which is this little lightning bolt right there. It comes in three colors, just like the the different. Uh, Cards do. So green being neutral, red being prosecution, blue being defense. If it's green, means it could be played for either side. So moment of insight, it what it means is uh, reveal, you get to reveal an unrevealed opponent summation card. Uh, so she gets to actually see one of my four that I banked previously, and it just stays face up. So you get to, now, or if you already have one face up, you then could switch that uh, with a new card yeah. so that it adds to the, you know, yeah, surprise never, what you I've have. I've never got played with one of those Okay, before. so she's drawing that one. Uh, two over each to the occupation trade aspect and two to the English and one to the Catholic. Wow. Yeah. So this is a prosecution witness. Um, so that stays face up now. She knows that. And that's the advantage of the moment of insight. Wow. All right. So I'm going to peek at all unrevealed occupation trait markers. Oh, and Ellen says uh, they're, they're going to have a promo later on this year for Louis Riel's U.S. citizenship. Cool. cool. Yep. All right, she has peaked, meaning they get arrowed towards her, and unfortunately she now knows, and I don't. All right, so let me see. I like that for later, and I like that for later. Oh, that's... A... Wow. That is really good. Okay, so... Between these three cards, two of them I'm going to bank. I just don't know which. Um, all right. So the prosecution calls witness George Ness. Uh, we actually covered this one earlier during uh, jury selection. So I could peek at two language trait markers and get a moment of insight or three actions. I choose the three actions. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and... So we'll go ahead and lock the English in at five to where it can't be moved except through events at this point, mm -hmm. uh, which it's not as high as I would like it, but that's okay. Uh, we might have something in, in store for Amanda. We will see. Uh, and then I have two other actions. So I will go ahead and go one on that juror and one here on that juror for a total of three actions. Amanda? Prosecution witness Hilliard Mitchell. Oh, you drew well, too. I like this. Yeah. Peek <laughs> um, at any two trait markers and have a moment of insight. Or the two actions, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So... Two trait markers. So trait markers being... Anything. Yes. And it's peek at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boom. 
Okay, so now I get to look at another one of your cards, yes? <sighs> another moment of insight. Wow, she... <laughs> Very insightful. Right. I mean, who is that? This is the prosecution attorney, Thomas Chase Cograin. Place, Which... Uh, prosecution may play in reaction to cancel a defense event. Or during... Keep going. Oh, um, place three sway markers on unlocked jurors or remove all sway markers affecting one juror, even a locked one, and then place one sway marker on that juror. Right. So, that's now two really good cards that she mm -hmm. has seen. But to be honest with you, we both know that each other's bank cards yeah. are going to be strong, strong cards for each other. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we definitely have to uh, anticipate that and try and prepare for that as best we can. Ellen says, uh, yo, prosecution, religion is largely a mystery among the jury. You might want to raise Catholics a tick or two just to be safe. Fair point. Fair point. All right. Oh, yeah, because it's buried. Okay. Um... So that's really good. That's really good. It's got to be that. Okay. So here are my two banked cards. So all we're looking at, and let me see if I can get them up here. So all we're worried about are summation events, especially that. That is sick good. <laughs> Great. So, all right. So we're going to set those aside <laughs> so we don't mess with those. So we have two left. Um... All right, prosecution calls Robert Jefferson to the stand. Robert Jefferson, a farm instructor, probably not good, uh, was in Chief Poundmaker's camp where he heard a letter from Rial being read in part saying, quote, God has given us victory. 30 half-breeds and five Crees sustained the battle against 120 men. After 35 or 40 minutes of fire, the enemies took flight. Bless God, end quote. So I could add to the uh, two to the farmer aspect this way and one to the merchant aspect. However, we are going to go ahead and lock down that juror. One and two for the two actions. So he is now locked, which again, three deliberation action points is going to come into play during the end game here. So I felt that was important as opposed to messing with the, uh, with the aspects. Okay, prosecution witness Thomas Jackson. He was a Prince Albert druggist. His key testimony about Riel was, quote, he spoke of the people in the town and of the settlers generally. He said he had no desire to molest them and that his quarrel was with the government and the police and the Hudson Bay Company. So I'm going to move the farmer, and as farmer aspect and the government aspect towards me, one. Oops, a little aggressive there. Or is it on four? Yeah, it was on four. There you go. And government, and government. government. All right. And this just feels a little dirty. I'm not going to lie. The prosecution calls the Métis. Oh, my. <laughs> so it's defense allies. Uh. So the Métis Nation are people of mixed American Indian and Euro-American ancestry in the areas around the Red and Saskatchewan rivers. Such mixed race people were referred to by other now offensive terms. Mixed bloods, half breeds, bois brus, I, my mud French, bloods, maybe. That's uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, uh, black Scots and jacketars. Dang. None of those things seem real, real it nice. Doesn't seem very friendly uh, at all. So yeah, so obviously the Métis. This is who Louis Riel represented. So this is a very strong card for the defense, unless the prosecution gets it. The prosecution. It's also a very strong card. Because it it's the only card yeah. that I know of that has four action of points actions. of it. So that is actually really good. So I wanted to kind of wait and leave this kind of as my coup yeah. de gras for the trial in chief. So four actions. Now, I'm not allowed to place more than two sway markers on jurors. So keep that in mind or else I would place three on this juror here. So that's one and two. And then I have two more. Which I will go ahead. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and take Alan's advice and we will bump that up one. 
I cannot bump it up again because it costs two actions. I've already spent three, and I only have one left. So we will, looking at this, we have two merchants, three, check that, three merchants. So we will go ahead in there and bump up the merchant. And with that, the prosecution's main actions have come to an end, and we will bank these two. Oh, we haven't banked, I haven't banked it, okay. Well, how do I have more cards than you? I have two more. Did I, did I go? You must have gone twice. Did I? You must, you had to have. Math, it's hard. Really, did we screw that up? You had to have, because I have two cards left. And how many do you have banked already? Just make sure. One, two, three, four. Yeah, then go ahead. All right, my bad. So I shouldn't have done that yet. So here, easy enough. Let's back that up. One, two, three, four. Act like you don't have that information. There you go. Go. All right, prosecution witness Henry Walters, uh, plus one to insanity. Okay. All right, so now we will go one, two, three, and if you're you two, or if you're you two, Katorza. All right, cool. Okay, defense witness Philip Bruno. Which we've you talked about already. already. Yep. Okay, so plus one to the insanity Arr. track and. One my way to French and Catholic aspect. All right. So I was wondering here if you were just completely ignoring it or you were just saving. So that was clever because I thought you'd forgotten about it and I wasn't exactly going to point it out to you. All right. So we are finished with trial in chief and now we move into summation. So now all the these cards here are out of the game at this point. So we will just remove them. And now we have... The six cards here that go into our hands. So now, just to make sure we get this right. So the summation rounds, uh, there's uh, the prosecution goes first. I play exactly three of my six summation cards. Then the defense will play all six of her defense cards, mm -hmm. uh, of her summation cards, sorry. And then I will get last licks. So, non-attorney cards, uh, you play it for the event, you do the event. If you play it as actions, you don't have to play a card for a summation event. Instead, you get two actions uh, usable only to sway unlocked jurors. So, if you, for non-attorney cards, this juror and this juror cannot be touched. Um, we can use uh, attorneys to object, which basically it negates mm -hmm. that card. And both cards are discarded, both the objection card as well as the attorney. Um, yeah, and that's that. So here we go. So we have really good cards. Now, I know Amanda has banked some attorneys, so she is going to be able to unlock locked jurors. I know that. Uh, so that's really good. That's really good. That, all right. Um, so we're going to hold off on those. And we're going to use her own attorney. Uh, let's oh, hold on real quick before I get started. So Mike says, uh, game so interesting. Got to play it this weekend at Con of mm -hmm. the North. Good. Glad to hear it. And Alan says, uh, we call her action the rush to insanity thing. <laughs> All right. So I am using her own defense attorney against her, Francois Xavier Lemieux. At the time of the trial, Lemieux was a member of the Quebec le legislature with a strong record of acquittals for his clients. The jury deliberated for only half an hour and found Rial guilty of treason, recommending mercy. The judge, however, sentenced Rial to death. So... He did a poor job. Yes. Um, all right. So if this were the defense, they can play in reaction. However, uh, place five sway markers total on unlocked jurors or rem uh, play to remove all sway markers affecting one juror, even a locked one, and then place one sway marker on that juror. So instead, I'm going to play five. I'm actually going to reject. Okay, so she's using another attorney to object, which, uh, just to be clear here, let me make sure I do this right. So, objection. Um, 
So if an attorney card for your side only, uh, you can play uh, during your opponent's turn to cancel. They're just played. So because this is a defense attorney, Amanda can play it. If it were a prosecution, she could not do that. So that negates that. So that's one of my plays. Now, Amanda will only be able to play five cards. All right. So that changes things a little bit. Now, uh, we will, the prosecution attorney, Thomas Chase Casgrain, I think. Uh, he was a member of Adolf Philip Cannon's, Karen's law firm and served as French Canada's only representative for the crown among the five prosecuting attorneys. He was hanged in effigy by Real, Real supporters in Quebec, but was later elected a successful politician from that region. So it was temporary, their outrage, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm, yeah, we're, we're going to stop there. All right, so I get to place three sway markers total on unlocked jurors or do the exact same thing. Okay, and Amanda's not going to do anything this time, so I'm going to... She elects not to. So I will place three, one, to lock that, and then I will place two others there. And last but not least, for my last magic trick... Uh... Uh, yeah, okay. Prosecution will play a matter of $35,000. On appeal, Chief Justice Walbridge was, greeted, or was greatly swayed by the evidence concerning Rial's willingness to abandon the cause for $35,000. About Rial's sanity, he remarked, quote, In my opinion, this shows he was willing and quite capable of parting with this illusion if he got $35,000, end quote. Ah. So the question then was, was Rial looking just to get paid? I don't know. All right, so summation event. Down one on the insanity track, plus one to the French, Catholic, and farmer aspects. So Catholic comes up one, the uh, French up one, and the farmer up one. So even though these aspects help Amanda, they still count as positive points mm -hmm. for me, for the prosecution. So that's good. And with that point, I have three left. So now Amanda will play her entire hand. and Which we'll, is five, since I objected. Right. And we'll see how badly this goes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, first of all, I am going to play pros I'm sorry, defense attorney Charles Fitzpatrick. He also represented the defense as chief counsel. He laid out the, art, the evidence of Rial's lunacy, which, he argued, removed Rial from the moral responsibility of his actions. Fitzpatrick would later serve as Chief Justice of Canada. I'm going to um, remove all sway markers affecting one juror, even a locked one, and then place one sway marker on that juror. I'm going to unsway or unlock this guy. Boo. And see, I knew this was going to happen, and so I have cards. Because, yo dog. All right, so let's see. Uh, I'm assuming having your own markers is more valuable than removing opposition. Um, they actually are yes and no because it makes it harder for the other the opposition to lock those jurors. So having your own on there, you have to remove your opponents before you can place that. Both colors can't occupy the same juror. Whereas on the aspects, that's just showing who moved it. That's all that is. Um, and Holden says... Uh, I missed the beginning, but I'm excited to watch from the start. Very excited for this game as a giant fan of Real and a proud French Canadian. So, thanks. Nice. Appreciate it. Okay, so then I'm going to play another defense attorney, James M. Greenshields. Come on! James Naismith Greenshields was a highly skilled Montreal trial lawyer. He worked with more senior law lawyers, Francois Xavier Lemieux and Charles Fitzpatrick, for Real's defense. This one is four sway markers or remove all sway markers. So this is an interesting choice for Amanda. Does she remove here and unlock him and just flip one? Or does she add four, which allows her to lock that one? Or, and depending on what else she has in her hand, she could add four here. And if something else adds three sway markers, then she would have three locked. 
on her side. So I don't know. Um, but having that many attorneys, I'll be honest, I didn't anticipate having both. I was really, really hoping to be uh, that she would only have two total, uh, one that she objected with, and then one that removed that. So that that's really frustrating for me because, yeah, that makes it really, really tough on my end. I have four spring markers. Okay, so she is so she's going to leave him locked and she's going to add four. And because it's a defense attorney, she's allowed or an attorney in general, she's allowed to add more than two sway markers to a single juror. Okay, defense testimony counsel of the XLB, they have much testimony concerned the fact that okay. decisions regarding the rebellion do not emanate emanate. Oh, sorry, directly from Rial, but was from the Council of the Exovide, which was formed by Rial to advance his religious and political philosophies. Either two, my way to the French, two to the English, or one to merchant and farmer. So what are your options? So it's... Two to my way to the French, aspect, or, or two to the English, or one to merchant and one to farmer. Hmm. Choices, choices. I think I'm going to do the merchant and farmer. Okay, one because each. There's so many merchants out there. That makes sense. I could also make a case for the mm -hmm. English. I think both make sense, yeah. Defendant Louis Rial. Oh. Rial was a crusader for the rights of the Metis, having been asked by the Metis leaders, including Gabriel Dumont, to return from Montana to lead them. He ignored his lawyer's advice and testified on his own behalf in what proved to be the de decisive moment of the trial. Now, I was wrong when I said the Métis was the strongest card in the game. No, it's Louis Riel himself, which is five actions. Whew. It seems appropriate, though, that he, mm -hmm. he actually comes on the defensive side, though. All right, so what, what's the uh, event? Either plus one or minus one to insanity, or two each for any two trait aspects. Wow. Oh, I misspoke earlier about the, there's no, there's not a two sway marker limit uh, for non-attorneys um, when uh, during, during deliberate or during summation. So you mm -hmm. could do that still. So. Going to move his insanity marker. Okay. And defense witness. And, hold on. No, 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 no. And one each for one length. Uh, I'm sorry. No, no. no, sorry. I'm looking at either plus one or my. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I was looking during the uh, trial in chief. You're right. Carry on. Defense witness Father Vital Formand. Vital Formand. Blah, blah, blah. We already did that. Okay. Right. Um, so plus one to insanity. The so, defense rests. <laughs> so the reason she's doing that is because she gets to move all these aspect tracks to her way if uh, at the level she's at right now right mm -hmm. now all right so all right so we're gonna go ahead uh we're gonna start with prosecution witness general frederick middleton middleton was educated at the royal military college in sandhurst serving at many locations throughout britain's far-flung empire in 1884 he was appointed general officer commanding the militia in charge of government forces during the Northwest Rebellion. So he led the forces against Rial. So during summation, it's two towards the prosecution to each occupation trait. So two, 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 which basically Negates offsets that. that. And oh, man. two to the English oh. and one to the Catholic. Dang. And it also has a little note here. After playing this card, place it next to the discard to show that officers recalled events can be played, but because it's during summation, yeah. that's that's a cow's opinion. It's mm. moved. All right. Next, prosecution uh, has Charles Nolan. Charles Nolan, cousin to Louis Rial, was a Métis farmer and political organizer. He was a member of the Exovidate. Vide. Exovide. I guess. All right. We'll go with it. And became the prosecution's star witness against the Real in exchange for his freedom. So he's a turncoat. Quote, Nolan wanted prayer. Real wanted rebellion. End quote. So plus three to the English and plus one to all three occupation traits. Ugh. And three to English, which pegs that mm -hmm. out. And that's why I didn't mind locking that earlier because I had that already locked down. And last but not least... 
prosecution attorney Christopher Robinson. Christopher Robinson was a high-profile lawyer with strong links to the Prime Minister John A. MacDonald. He had previously represented the government during the appeal of Patrick J. Whelan, assassin of Thomas Darcy McGee. Robinson acted as senior counsel for the Crown in Rial's trial. So it kind of makes sense that he, thematically, that he gets last licks here, right? So, place four sway markers total on unlocked jurors. Well... That's probably going to happen, or remove all uh, and flip one. So we're going to place four, and the reason being, it is more important for me to lock jurors. Yes. So one, two, and three to lock that juror, and for a fourth, it really doesn't matter which one, I don't think. Um, so we'll just go ahead and throw it right there for four. And with that, the prosecution rests. So we take all the cards, okay. we put them aside. So now adjust. <coughs> Hold on. We'll, we'll go through because I, I want to... There's a little bit of com, a conflicting between these steps and the actual rule book. So okay. let's go through for deliberation. All right. So deliberation and scoring. Let's see here. Hold on. Let me see here. Uh, oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Holden says it looks like a great back and forth. It, that's exactly what it is. Yes. It's frustrating as the prosecution. I finally got them locked and then Amanda re unlocked them and then almost locked them in her favor. But then I was able to come over here and lock him, which to be honest with you, what I think you should have done is uh, flipped him because locked jurors are the most important thing, right. in my opinion, for the prosecution. So I'm grateful that you didn't, but we'll see if it ends okay. up mattering. All right, so deliberation and then scoring. So if the evidence of guilt marker is not at two, if it's here or there, game over, defense wins. But we're at three, so we're good to go. Um, then if the evidence of insanity is in zero or one, nothing happens. However, we're at three. So now you get to peg every one Three, down two. two. One, two. I get to do it. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry. One, two. Don't want to take your one, joy. One, two. All right. One, two. One, two. One, two. All right. So you can see, even though I had all these up, but I, I wanted to focus on these mm -hmm. two because there's so many of them. And that I think I did a pretty yes. good job overall of that. All right. So now reveal all of the jurors' unrevealed trait markers. So go ahead. So that's a farmer, right, as expected. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And this... is a Protestant. Okay, that's good. Wow, that, that's perfect that was you. perfect for me, actually. A merchant. Nice. Okay. Catholic. Okay. English. Wow, another really good one for me. So Amanda did a good job on that. Catholic. Oh, no. Farmer. Oh. <gasps> Catholic. Oh, that's why you didn't unlock him. Well done. All right. Sneaky, sneaky. Well done. Uh, all right. Oh, one thing we, we, we forgot to do um, back here. For the evidence of guilt, I should have been able to add one sway marker onto each unlocked juror from the judge's instructions to the jury. So it starts here. This one just goes away. That one, that one's fine. That, one's that fine. one goes, goes away. away. One goes away. One goes away. And, and it's uh, unlocked juror, so that one stays. Good call, Alan. Thanks Thank for you. the reminder. All right, so now we now the jurors deliberate, which is where locked jurors get to sway other unlocked jurors to come around to their point of view. Locked jurors, and this is where the deliberation points come in. So with the prosecution going first, meaning me, and then alternating, choose one of your locked jurors and spend its deliberation action points in the usual manner, but with these restrictions. A locked jurors, uh, they can only be uh, influenced. The, so for instance, this one here, he can only influence the Protestant track, the English track, or the merchant track. Those are the only things. Or he can only add sway markers to... Uh, jurors that have the same uh, aspects it's, it's as just, them, and it's it's, it's one. one right? I believe it's one per one for one. Yeah, it's one per they have in common. Right. Thus, two jurors with nothing in common cannot sway each other. Newly locked jurors do affect do come into play, mm -hmm. so you can chain. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So for starting with me, 
Um, and it's four, it'd be one, two, three, four. So, yeah, we he's do two, you two, do. I do one guy at a time. Oh, uh, so you're going to be able to not, ah. Uh, so if, so just the look here. So merchant, merchant, English, English. So I could put two sway markers down on him, but then Amanda gets to influence. And she could uh, undo because the, the English and the cat play. Just one of them, though. Just, uh-huh. just one, because I only have one deliberation action point. True, but it would be enough, because then there would be three. This guy only has two, mm -hmm. and they share that. So I'm not going to be able to lock this cat. So instead, or I could, you know what? Better yet, I'm going to spend, we're going to go ahead and use him to go ahead and go one and two. Because now it forces Amanda to spend her one aspect to remove that, so it's your honor. Now she could ask, uh, influence these, but now that that is done, and the last one to be, uh, that can spend his del deliberation action points, because these three are unlocked, they can't do anything. But now, because I got it to a point to where Amanda had to spend it, now I can use that mm -hmm. to influence out here. So he's gonna spend one for English to bump that up, and then, uh, looking at this, there's four Catholics out here, so I might as well spend the other one to up that. All right. All right. So now we go in to final scoring. All right. So here we go. So we'll do. We'll we'll start with this one. Can we use paper? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. We probably ought to. Hold on. Break break that out. So. Juror number one. So we'll have juror one, two, three, four, five, and six. So juror number one. Catholic, two points. English, nine, so that we're at 11. And farmer is four at 15, minus, but he's locked. So it's halved. So, and I, it's, it's rounded in their favor. Right, uh, da, da, da. let me make sure. Um, yeah, rounded down. So 15 seven. rounded down is seven, and then add the number or subtract that number based on the. So, juror number one gets me a whopping three points. I have to get to a hundred, so that's not good. So, juror one is done. Juror number two. So he is, uh, let's see, he's Catholic, so two, mm -hmm. French, five. five, and then merchant is 12. 12. I'm not good at math. I'll count. Okay. So that's 12, not locked, so it's just 12 minus one is 11. So we're at 14 points right now, not good. However, all right, so now we have Catholic, two, mm -hmm. English, total of 11, and farmer, Four for 15 doubled because he's locked for the prosecution that we're at 30 and 35 that's a little bit better so now we're at what is that 49 points oh no save him for the last oh I'm sorry juror four all right so first off Protestant at three English so we're at a total of 12 and merchant is 19 19, not locked, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15 points for him. So we're now at 64. All right, so Catholic at 2, English, that's 11, and Merchant is 18 and unlocked, so 19, 20, 21. This is going to be close. So that's 50, 71, 82, uh, hold on. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 75 right now. I like my chances. Yeah, you too. Dang it. All right. So the Protestant is three. English is nine for 12. Merchant uh, for seven is 19. Doubled is 38. 39, 40, 43 total. Dang it. So the grant for the first time, the yes. prosecution is going to win. So here we go. We got 10. Uh, Say 18, carry the one, 
three, five, six, seven, eight, a hundred and twenty-eight. You suck. Real hangs. <laughs> Dang it. All right. Good game. All right. So so that's yeah, that's uh that's Louis Real. High yeah. treason. Trial of Louis Real. So uh what did y'all think? Um so let me ask you, Amanda, what do you think? We, I mean, we we oh, reviewed yeah, the game. Yeah, we reviewed the game already. I very much enjoyed this game. I I think I like uh, the push and pull. It really, I I do as well, and that goes to show. Now I am curious, if we were to go back and look at the video, had you unlocked that juror? I'm curious, yeah. Because okay, he scored forty three points, right? Mm -hmm. Had you just unlocked him, he would have scored. Let's see, he had uh, he the last one was anyway. five. No, hold on. That was at 38. That would have been 19 and 5. That would have been 24 points. You would have had 99 points. I would have had 99. Defense may have won yeah. in that case. Yeah. So that goes to show how important it is as the prosecution to have locked and jurors. How important because, it is as a defense to make sure that they don't stay locked. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was, that, that was pretty cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cool. That's it. I got to go buy this. Awesome. <laughs> um, now, and, and that's the thing. We're not, I mean, a lot of people say that we're trying to push games. Not at all. We're actually like publisher agnostic in yeah, a sense that we, we're going to play the games and we want y'all to be able to, uh, well, actually here, let's do it this way. Um, we're going to be able to let you guys make your own decision. I mean, be it our reviews on this, uh, on our podcast, or whether it's uh, us playing through these, um, I mean, you take a look at other games that we have recently reviewed and uh, done playthroughs for. Not everything are we raving about. No. There are some that we're like eh, about mm -hmm. um, this. However, for what it is, plus the price point, yeah. like at twenty five bucks, I think. Awesome. Um, I think it's fantastic. This is this is our kind of filler. Mm -hmm. This is uh, thinky filler. Um, we enjoy Twilight Struggle. We enjoy Thirteen Days which is another thinky filler um, in that type of game. And this very much falls in line yes. with that, don't you yeah, think? Yeah, definitely. So, but yeah, so if, if this, uh, we did a pretty in-depth review of this recently in our podcast, so go check it out. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, then somewhere down here in the notes, uh, somewhere in the comments, whatever, there's going to be a place to subscribe. Yep. So please, if you Hit enjoy. Hit the red subscribe button, give it a big thumbs up, and... Check right. us out on, we have website links and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Patreon and all kinds of stuff in the comment section. Yeah, and Patreon definitely helps support the show, helps us be able to do this, improve our equipment, etc., etc. That's patreon.com forward slash heavy cardboard. Um, so yeah, we'll catch y'all later tonight. We're actually going to be doing the same thing for this, uh, like this, but uh, three player Maria yeah. later tonight. So yeah. thanks again for watching, y'all. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.